so much. Thank you. Good morning. Grace to you, peace to you, welcome to you on this first Sunday of Advent. A couple of things that are going on. We are having communion and everyone is invited for this is the table of God. It is not our table and all of us are welcome to it. So we hope that you join us. And then there is another table and that is we'll be having a potluck over in the other building at the end of our service and we hope that you will join us for the potluck. So uh, it should be a good time for fellowship and for food and for uh, continuing to experience uh, the joy of each other and the joy of the season. And then this morning, of course, our main, uh, our main feature, our main work this morning is uh, being performed by our choir and we are grateful for them sharing their gifts. Thank you so much for who you are and what you bring to us. And we look forward to that. So thank you for that. And then, and then I think Linda, you, Linda Johnston, you have an announcement. Is that right? I do. I do. Oh. Abbott uh, okay. says you do. Okay. So please, <laughs> please come up to the microphone. Okay. Okay. Okay, this is a, an announcement of thanks. Uh, there are three groups of people I want to thank. First, first is the, um, all of you, <laughs> because um, two weeks ago we had the bake sale. I'm just gathering my thoughts here. And I want to thank everybody that brought something, everybody that bought something, and the people, the quiet people, who set up tables and make sure everything looks good. We raised $726.50. Thank you. <laughs> um, that will go towards the cost of a new de defibrillator, which will be kept in Smith Hall, because none of us are getting any younger, and uh, <laughs> we may need it soon. <laughs> um, um, then last week, thank you again to all of you for pitching in, being good sports, and just decorating the sanctuary. But again, there are people behind the scenes. And I want to pull three of them out. DC, Monet. When you came in here last week, not you two. <laughs> when you came in here last week, you'll have noticed that the banners and the sconces and the stars were already on the walls. That made your life so much easier. And we have DC and Monet to thank for that. Because they spent... <laughs> they spent the Sunday afternoon before last Sunday getting all that stuff on the walls. It made everybody's life so much easier, thank you. And the third piece I, person I want to thank is Bill Peterson, who actually got all of the decorations, other decorations up here, the trees put up and all that stuff. So again, he made your life so much easier and he does it so quietly. So thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Those are good words. Those are good words. All right. Well, I invite you to take a deep breath and center yourself. I want to extend especially a welcome to those who are visiting with us this morning. It is our hope that you experience a sense of community, a sense of belonging, that it would continue to grow. For life is full of joy and also has its time of trial. But you are not alone. We are not alone. The spirit of life and love calls all of us together. And we are here in this moment because something greater is working in the world. That is the promise of Advent. That is the hope of Christmas. So here we are. Welcome to you.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus, the Word made flesh, was God, was with God in the beginning. Through Jesus, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. And the Spirit, the breath of God, was hovering over the waters. Creative God, breath of all life, through whom all things are created and sustained, all sons and daughters, flocks and herds, all birds of the air and fish of the sea, you walked this earth as child and creator. You touched the soil, quenched your thirst, embraced this world, you brought life and life, love and laughter into a dark and death-filled lives. Creative God, breath of all life, through whom all things are created and sustained. We bring to you our song from contrite and willing hearts. O come, thou wisdom up from on high, who orders all things mightily, to us the path of knowledge show, and teach us in her ways to go. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel, shall come again and with us ever dwell. Please stand and let us sing. Spirit of life and love, what are the quiet times? When are the quiet times? When we would dare look deep inside and ask what is our greatest hope? What is the dream that is unfulfilled? What is our greatest fear and uncertainty? When do we have the courage to look at that in ourselves 
And when do we have the courage to share it? With one another? With the person we love? Do we dare do that? O come, O come, Emmanuel. It's about coming to terms with our true, deepest selves. What it means to live in this world with the greatest meaning and what it means to participate in your loving recreation of the world. So for this quiet, for this song, for this time of prayer, we give thanks. So hear our prayer. May all the people say, Amen. called Gaudete, and it is in Latin, but it is very simple. It's rejoice, Christ is born of the Virgin Mary, over and over and over. Well, some will be glad and some will be sad. The uh, sermon, the message this morning uh, should be brief. So there you go.
because the word, thank you for the awes, I appreciate that, uh, thank you. It's always a fun thing for a congregation, a pastor, to uh, tease each other about those kinds of things. Advent is a time that always, a time that moves me to pray and moves me to think. We could take the name of Shadow Rock, really, I think, and we could change it to Advent, United Church of Christ. And the reason why I say that is because you are the only congregation I know that in your DNA, whether you're conscious of it or not, whether you are aware of it or not, it is in your DNA, you're the only congregation I know that asks the question, what does it mean to be the people of faith and conscience to stand in the right relationship to history? This is why I come here. This is why I love you. This is why I have such tremendous hope for you, for us, and for this world. Advent is that question. Because Advent is a time when what we do as human beings is we say we're going to stand in solidarity with all people of all time in their suffering, in their hopes, and in their dreams. People of all the past and people in the world today and people in every generation to come. Human beings look to the future as they look to the stars. And they hope. They want more. They want better. We carry around with us, it's almost a biological imperative that somehow the world, that life should be fair. And when it's not fair, we feel it. Not just for ourselves, but we feel it for other human beings. An advent really is all people of all time looking for a time when life is filled and characterized by justice, what is fair, what is most loving, what is most whole and complete for ourselves as individuals, for ourselves as community, and for our world. And so shepherds watched their flocks by night, understanding that they were at the bottom of the social ladder, knowing that their hopes and their dreams didn't mean much to anybody except to each other. And so they sang, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom us. For we are captive Israel. We share that spirit, that desire, and that hope. So when I think of Advent, I think of a timeline. I think of this eternal now becoming present that our hopes are realized. And I think of the hard work that you do because we know that life isn't fair. We know that the world is not made in such a way as to give the best to the least. And yet we work hard to live as if because we live to make that real for each other and for our neighbor and for whoever we meet. That's why we're an Advent people. It does ask the question, what does it mean to stand in right, right relationship with history? Which means that we look like we're kind of crazy sometimes. Because we believe in the power of love and peace and justice. And we live as if. 
But today, on the first Sunday of the month, we have communion. And so we can think of Advent as a timeline, but I would ask that we switch just a little bit and think of it as a table. A table that spans all the way to the past and in the present now and all the way into the future. And think about it as a table where there are too many empty places at the table. There is a place set for them. There's a placemat and there is a plate and there is silverware or chopsticks or whatever, whatever eating utensil goes with that, whatever person and whatever culture and whatever time and whatever world. There is a place for every person at this table. But for now, there's too many empty places. But we come to the table during Advent, the Advent table. And we bow our heads and we give thanks for the people that are there and for the people who will be there but not there yet. Because hope is answered. Dreams are fulfilled. So when we do this thing called communion and we share this cup and we share this bread, we are talking about a table that really has no end and where all are welcome. I ask that uh, you read along with me as I read to you this table of Jesus. The table of Jesus means there is something of sustenance and meaning for every human being. It begins with grace and acceptance. It is not possible to keep such gifts of the table from coming because they will come just as Advent is about what is coming. It is inevitable. It will come. Such inevitability of love cannot be held back, but neither can it be rushed. That's just how Advent works. Even though such love is as certain as the tides and the stars, it is possible to not see it. It is possible to miss it. To turn just as it brushes past you. And when you begin to grasp what it is you missed, you become an incarnation of our congregation. When you real, begin to realize you missed it, you become like Moses in the shadow of the rock, watching God's backside fade in the distance. That's where our name comes from. The story of Moses being hidden in the cleft in the shadow of the rock because he could not behold the full glory of God. And so to protect Moses, God put, him, God put Moses there and walked by That's who we are. And so, stay, sit, linger, tarry, ponder, wait, behold, wonder, take and eat, take and drink. There will be time enough for running. It's going to happen. Time enough for rushing around, it will happen. Time enough for worrying, for pushing. But for now, in this time together, stay, breathe. Waiting for grace is the spirit of Advent. And there is something on the table of Jesus, unique and just for you. On the night Christ was born in Bethlehem, we tend to picture an event as one of peaceful serenity, 
with a young mother cradling her newborn in her arms. But the scene could hardly have been more different on a nearby hillside where some shepherds stood watch over their sheep. An angel of the Lord appeared in the heavens with the announcement of the ages that Christ the Lord was born in the city of David. As amazing as that moment must have seemed for the nervous shepherds, they had no way of knowing church was just getting started. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord joined by the multitudes in heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to all. When the sun went down on the hillside, it was just like every night before. The shepherds with their sheep could never have dreamed what the silent night held in store. They heard a sound saw a light they didn't recognize at first they were afraid but everything changed when they saw it was their own eyes Let us pray. Imagine throwing a pebble into the center of a pond and the circles of ripples that move out from the center. We pray first for those closest to us, our immediate family, closest friends, for their health, their needs, 
joys, and fears. God of creation, God of salvation, We pray for our extended family and friends who we might not see each week, for their love and concern, for their well-being. God of creation, God of salvation, hear the prayers of our hearts. As the ripples reach out toward the land, we pray for those who we only have contact with annually or even less for a blessing this Advent time. God of creation, God of salvation, hear the prayers of our hearts. And as the ripples reach their furthest point, we pray for this world and its people, for the needs of this week and the future. God of creation, God of salvation, who speaks to us through thunder and whisper, who loves us as if there we were but one to love. Hear the prayers of our hearts. Long ago, so our meal tradition says, Jesus came in the humble birth of a child, a child of amazing and divine love, a child of Mary's yes, a child of Joseph's acceptance, a child of of our humanity. We pledge ourselves to the unknowns of the dreamy dream. Long ago, our tradition also says, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. This bread is broken, as my body will be. And he handed it to his friends, inviting them to eat. Remember all that I have been to you. Long ago, our tradition says, Jesus poured a cup of wine, Offered, it, offered thanks for it, and gave it to his friends. This wine is poured out as my life will be poured out. As you drink, give thanks for all I have given. May this gathering of this community of faith be comforted and challenged during this Advent season. May people see in us the courage and the generosity that characterize Jesus' life. Today we ritualize and celebrate the inclusive table practices of Jesus. May this holy meal empower each of us to become partners in the great work of healing all people, all nations, and all planets. I invite Karen and uh, Susan, if you would, please come to the first station. Rita, Patricia, second station here. Tim and Ashley, you have the third station, which will be here. Okay. And Lois and Jim, you have the fourth station, which is on the other side. Closer. You like each other, right? <laughs> okay, very good. Okay. All those who love God, desire to be at peace with one another, are invited to this table. Come and see how good the Lord is.
praying for the work of ministry in this place and beyond. Remain seated, but please join me in the dedication of ourselves and offerings. May the atmosphere, the creative breath of God, 
enveloping us, penetrate every pore of our planet, and activate all those impulses needed to keep every life affirmed, every dream alive, every voice singing, and every child dancing. These are the times. We are the people. All of creation is blessed. May we love all and serve all. May God be with you. And also with you. Amen. Amen. sounded really hard. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Let's do two things at once. Stand for our last song and give a standing ovation to our choir. Oh. 